Welcome to this tutor to you topic video that looks at economic indicators of development. This is part of paper two, unit B, changing economic world. In order to compare the levels of development between countries, we use development indicators. These are pieces of data that measure important aspects of a country. There are economic and social indicators that we can use. This video focuses on economic measures of development. The level of development in a country is usually measured by the economy or how much money it makes. This is known as gross national income or GNI. It is a total monetary value of all income earned by the country's residents, both individuals and businesses, and from both domestic and foreign sources during a specific time, typically the quarter of a year. It takes into account not only the production that occurs within the country's borders, but also the income earned by citizens and businesses outside the country's borders. This value is then divided by the total population to give an average figure for each person. This is called GNI per capita, and capita stands for per head. It is always measured in US dollars in order to be able to compare countries. You wouldn't be able to compare the level of wealth if you were using hundreds of different currencies. So we use GNI per capita to compare countries rather than the total GNI. Based on 2023 rankings, the top five countries in the world for GNI were in first place the United States, then China in second place, followed by Japan in third, fourth is Germany, and fifth is India. So this is the total wealth of those countries. However, the 2023 rankings for GNI per capita look quite different. Bermuda is in first place with a figure of 134,000 US dollars, although it is only ranked in 153rd place for total GNI, followed by Norway, then Switzerland, then Luxembourg, then Ireland. So it is much more helpful to think about the total GNI being divided between the population, i.e. how many people is that wealth having to support? For example, China might have the world's second largest economy valued at around $19 trillion, but that wealth is divided between 1.4 billion people. So they have a GNI per capita figure of $13,400 US dollars, being ranked 75th place in the world. But what about the UK? In terms of total GNI, we are in sixth place with around 3.3 trillion US dollars and we are ranked 27th for GNI per capita with a figure of 47,800 US dollars. However, some argue that it isn't that straightforward. For example, in 2023, the GNI per capita in Burundi in Africa was just $230. And this sounds very little because it is, but in Burundi, $230 is very different to $230 in a high income country like the UK. Prices in Burundi are much cheaper than many other countries, so that $230 will pay for many more goods and services than it would in the UK. So in order to overcome this disparity, the World Bank uses Purchasing Power Parity, or PPP, where it converts a GNI per capita value into a figure that describes what that amount of money would be able to buy using local prices. The PPP figure for Burundi is $840, which is 3.7 times the GNI per capita value. And this reflects that in Burundi, prices are around 3.7 times cheaper. But we must consider the limitations of using economic data. Measures of development need to be used carefully or they can lead to generalisations and misconceptions. For example, a country may have high GNI, but that doesn't mean that all its citizens have a good quality of life or standard of living. That wealth could be concentrated in urban areas, while people in rural areas are much worse off, like in China. Or there could be a divide between regions such as in Nigeria, where the quality of life is significantly lower than in the northern part of the country. We also need to consider that development data is not always up to date and some countries have data missing as well as some of that data being inaccurate as corrupt governments try to make their countries look better than they actually are through manipulating figures. A good example of that is China which has a history of fiddling with demographic data and their most recent census was delayed due to Covid making their data both inaccurate and out of date. 
It's also important to remember that calculations of GNI only take the products of the formal economy into account, but in many low-income countries or newly emerging economies, much of the economy is informal and many of the farmers produce food for their own families rather than to sell. So this figure can be quite inaccurate. And finally, economic wealth alone isn't enough to judge the development of a country. We also need to consider social indicators such as education and healthcare, which still can be lacking in some countries with high GNI per capita. That concludes this tutor to you topic video focusing on economic indicators of development. Thank you for watching.